Hey, and welcome back to Bane's Bites. I'm Bane. So when you see one of these, you probably think pizza. And then I hold it up next to this, and you go, what does pizza peel and maple syrup have to do with each other? What, what's going on? Well, let's find out. So maple syrup is definitely associated with breakfast, waffles, pancakes. And that's what we're doing today. We're making some pancakes. Now, the reason I have the pizza peel out is because down here in Texas, they say everything's bigger. So we're gonna prove that today and see just how big of pancakes we can make. Now everybody says box mix pancakes are easy, they're quick, they're convenient, and they are. But if you're gonna take the time to measure that out, you might as well throw a couple things together and make it from scratch because it makes it a heck of a lot better. So we're gonna start with just some all-purpose flour, about two cups. So to our flour, we're gonna add two teaspoons of baking powder. If you didn't know, there's usually a little lip on the can and that's just to level off your teaspoon. So there's one. And two, we're going to add a quarter or a half a teaspoon salt and a half a teaspoon baking soda. And the last dry ingredient is a tablespoon of sugar. You want to grab a whisk and just incorporate your dry ingredients and then we'll start adding the wet. Just got some butter here. We're going to take two tablespoons. I'm going to pop it in the microwave and melt that. And take a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And add that in. And then we're going to take a cup and a half of milk and add that in as well, along with two eggs and our melted butter. Like I said, last thing is two tablespoons of melted butter. We'll pop our eggs, and you just want to stir this lightly until you get everything incorporated. The trick to good pancakes, or one of them, is don't overmix your batter. You don't want gluten to form, you just want to get everything combined and hydrated. A couple lumps are still okay. So right before we started, I went out and I fired up the Blackstone. I've got it on low heat and just letting it warm up. I want to get to about 350, 375 degrees. I'm gonna check that with an InstaRead thermometer. But we're gonna let this batter rest for about five or 10 minutes. I'll get some of this stuff cleaned up and then we'll go outside and see how big we can make them. Hey, welcome back. So we got our batter poured into a dispenser. You can use a ladle, you can pour it right out of the bowl. If you're doing this inside or on an electric griddle, however you like to pour your pancakes, but I figured for the big ones, I'd bust out the dispenser. Got the Blackstone on, had it warming up. It's just around 375, perfect temperature for pancakes. So let's throw some butter down and see if we can't cook these things. And that'll about do it. Now why these are cooking, what we're looking for is rub bubbles to start to rise and you'll see them start to pop on top and that's how I know we're getting close to getting ready to flip. These aren't quite ready. You can check them with a normal spatula and just kind of peek underneath, but as soon as they are, we'll see if we can get them flipped with the pizza peel. You can see the bubbles are starting to rise, but they're not quite all popping clean yet. So I know it's not quite ready, but they do look pretty thick and pretty fluffy. Now let's give them a flip. One, and let's get the second one. Boom. All right, our pancakes are pretty much done, so we'll get them off the black top, get them on our platter, get inside, and give them a try. There's a Texas size short stack. Well, we couldn't find a silver platter to put them on, but we did find a gold, and I think gold's a little better than silver. These look great. They're super light, fluffy, golden brown. Of course, we gotta top them off with a little bit of butter, but I don't think one pat's gonna cut it. I don't even think two pats is gonna cut it. There we go, three pats. Now to top them off, I just happen to have a half gallon of fresh, grade A maple syrup. Now without any further ado, definitely time to try these out. Get a good sized bite, get some good syrup on there, Ooh, that's a big bite. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. They're light, they're fluffy. That syrup is amazing. Gotta have real maple syrup. And they're huge. So I call this a good success. Now don't forget, just because we made giant versions of these, this is still a great recipe to do on a Saturday morning. You can mix in berries or nuts or even sprinkles and make them funfetti, whatever you want. But it's a great recipe. It's really easy. It doesn't take much time at all. And it's always gonna be a crowd pleaser. If you like what we're doing, be sure to like the video, hit subscribe on the channel and keep your eyes out because we got a lot of fun stuff coming out. And as always, y'all have a great day because I'm about to tear these up.